Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kegels Nation. My name is Secret Agent Nukes No Kegels. I'm the founder and the director of the Kegels Industry Spy Network. And the Kegels Nation, of course. Now, you may have noticed that AI is gaining a lot of attention right now. I thought I would go ahead and do a little some... Uh, oh, there it is. Should have put that here. Anyway, I thought I would go ahead and do a little crash course on what I've been learning when it comes to prompt engineering. And to prove this even more, I'm going to bring up standard notes. This is, of course, coming from Liam Otley's very own video on prompt engineering. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go through every single one of these notes here and then make an AI prompt based out of this. I will be testing this with an AI model that I haven't used. Let's bring up Hugging Chat now. All right, so I have Hugging Face, and let's use... I'm going to go ahead and use Quen 2.5 Instruct. This is by Alibaba. If I can actually... Oh, this is how I'm supposed to do it. Oops. Anyway, now, first things first, we have conversational prompt engineering being human operated, follow up prompts for giving and good personnel. Yeah, good for personal use. So it's not a big deal. Next, we have single shot engineering. This is automated, no follow ups, no room for error, scalable, and ideal for AI assistance. Here, we're actually going to be using Quen, Quen 2.5 Instruct for this one. Then a conversation is good at making one's job easier and better. Single shot is good for building AI systems. And well, this is not going to cost thousands of any currency. Writing instructions in English is a good way to program if done right. And a well written prompt can complete an automated process. This is all the stuff we have here. Now, first things first, we're going to go through the task. We're going to tell the AI what it needs to do. I'm going to start with a verb to be descriptive. So in my case, I'm going to be using Markdown for this one. I'm going to do a task. Now, with the task on hand, you want to tell an AI exactly what it needs to do. And we need to start with a verb. Something like this. Okay, that's not bad. Make me a list of note-taking software that follows the free software philosophy. Now, if you want to learn free software philosophy, I will have a link to the description below where you can learn about free software philosophy. So there's that. Now, you can use something called chain of thought, where you tell the AI to think step by step in the instructions or provide it with a process to work each time. Now, in accuracy on simple problems, this provides a 10% boost. But if it's complex, it'll bring up a 90% boost. You can take a look at the video from Liam Otley about this, which will be linked below as well. So for that, complexity means dramatic improvement as a result of chain of thought prompting. Actually, now that I think about it, let's use DeepSeek because I know DeepSeek is going to be pretty good at it. DeepSeek. Where is it? DeepSeek R1. New chat with DeepSeek. So we have here Distill Quen version, which I'm fine with. So I think that should be okay. So that's going to be your task. And I just hit the mic. Anyway, next will be your specifics. You can use something called emotion prompt to add short phrases containing emotional stimuli to the original prompt. This will improve performance by 8% in simple tasks. But for complex ones, which I believe I'm doing a complex one here. Boom. I'm not joking. 115% improved performance. Now, for this, we're going to... Oh, der. We're going to go ahead. I'll go into my AI prompts thing over here. Now, the specifics. That's the next step here. And for the specifics of this, you can list the most important notes regarding execution. They can be tweaked and are added as testing occurs to improve the prompt, but we don't need to pile on too much. Emotion prompt 
again, can increase performance by 115%. It also enhances the truthfulness and informativeness of the LLM output by 19% or 12%. It'll probably be 12% if I do this right. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and say, bring about the pros and cons of the encryption since I want to protect myself from hackers and other cyber criminals because of what I've been reading lately. I believe this can also bring about emotion prompt. This will explain the importance of the uh, task at hand here. I'm also going to add something else. There we go. This is, I think, another emotional thing, but also logical as well. I also don't want to use proprietary note-taking software because I don't trust the developers when it's closed source. So we should be okay with that, I think. I'm coming up with this as I go along, and I'm taking y'all along for the ride. Though, I'm also doing this as a guide for exactly how to do a prompt like this, and you can tweak it with the LLM you're using, whether it be ChatGPT, which I wouldn't recommend, or anything Hugging Chat has, Llama, DeepSeek, Quen, even, Mixtral, if you want. It's not a big deal. There we go. That should be fine. So that's going to be a basic specifics here. Next is going to be context. So context. Part of that is true. I do have a somewhat small digital footprint. But if my digital footprint is massive, yeah, that would be bad OPSEC. So the amount of OPSEC you practice is basically the digital footprint you leave. If it's big, you're going to be found easily. If not, well, that's on you. That's the basic idea of what I'm doing here. Notice the spelling of free software. That is actually uh, how it's supposed to be spelled if you're talking about free software philosophy. Uh, I think over here, though, I might want to take care of that. I'll take care of it in a bit, though. But anyway, you can combine this role prompting I actually forgot the role. Oops. I think I did this here as well. I did. Oops. Well, luckily I could just do that for some reason. Um, I'm going to do role. Do that. There we go. That's going to help out a lot. The role you're going to want to do first, and it's essentially role playing. That's uh, what you want to do for the most part. And I actually forgot about that, all things considered. I didn't write this thing here, but uh, you definitely want to roll for sure. Actually, right over here. But I forgot to do that. If it's done right, 10.3 to 25% increase, roughly. Can be had. So that's the context there. Next, examples. I don't think I'm going to need examples. Unless, of course, I'm using few shot or zero shot. 10 to 32 examples, 175 billion, just for GPT-3. Uh, with DeepSeek, it's 32 billion, so probably four or five. It's going to be four or five. So let's do some examples. There we go. So we have the occasion. And by the way, yes, this is what OpenAI does with their prompts. So they just so happened to use the... Uh, markdown type prompting as well. I am very new to this, but I thought I would show off my skill. And this is also some uh, markdown uh, stuff that I'm also doing here. So we've got some examples. I'm going to do three examples, standard notes, notes nook, and obsidian. Because I have dabbled into that as well a bit off camera. Now, uh, the notes. For notes, you need to remind the LLM of the key aspects of a task to a desired style. They form the list of output for preferences, negative prompts, tone tweaks, and reminders of key points. So in my case, okay, so this is, I think, how I would do the notes. This is done right. This will actually make it 75% more accurate 
than when it's done in the middle. This is towards the beginning, but this would technically be the middle somewhere around here. So we have that to consider. Now, I'm going to go ahead and save this, quit that, and then let's bring it up. And then right here, doll in a markdown. Let's go ahead and add this in. Search the web for this type of stuff as well. And we shall now let the AI do its thing. Send it to DeepSeek. Searching Google, browsing search results, browsing web pages. Let's see. It recommends Joplin. I've used Joplin before as well. Standard notes. I have standard notes. It is under MIT, which is free software. And I was actually using that earlier. Proton happens to own them. Notesnook, I also use that for my, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I use that for my music. QOwn uses AES 256 bit encryption for notes, enhancing security. Cross platform, QOwn, is that a thing? Looks to be a thing. Is this it? This is it. Note taking with Nextcloud and OwnCloud integration. Small footprint, native application optimized for speed, consuming little processor and memory resources. So I don't think it's Chromium based then, so that's good. Installing this. There's a whole button of these. There's actually a whole button of these. You can build it from source if you want. Installing on Arch. They do have it in the AUR. They have it in Pac-Man as well. They've got a Pac-Man repo. That's actually not bad. You may want to read Ccash in AUR if you want to build at B times. Build times. Huh, that's interesting. So I can definitely take a look at QOwn. That's interesting. And then Zim Desktop. No built-in encryption. Data can't be stored in encryption containers. Offline, ideal for desktop use with plugin support. Free tier, rich features like Markdown, plugins, but lacks in-cloud syncing and encryption. I'm fine with that. So surprisingly, it actually did a really good job with uh, what I was able to pull off here. And I just made this on the spot. I made this on the spot, 61 seconds. So that's actually not bad, all things considered. I definitely think the LLM did a fantastic job with it. And this will definitely be in the marketplace of history. Went to note-taking apps. I was on ClickUp, Toolfinder, Zapier, XDA developers, PC Mag, and then extracting the relevant information. Never heard of some of this. Graphical desktop editor. Designed, maintain a collection of locally stored wiki pages, a personal wiki. Okay. So it's based on making a wiki type thing then. That's interesting. Never thought about it, but that's fine. And all of these are, of course, free software compliant. It didn't note the license for Notesnook. I'll take a look at that real quick. They are under GPL3, so it's also free software. It said open source, but it didn't find a license. That's fine. I think Standard Notes is under MIT. AGPL3. Okay. Server is under AGPL3. So it's not on MIT. That is a hallucination. But it did a good job otherwise. MIT, Joplin. Let's see. License is AGPL3. What did it say? Said MIT. That's a hallucination. It did a good job, but the licenses are wrong. Um, Joplin, that's incorrect. How's it under MIT? It's under AGPL. Did they just change it not too long ago? It's AGPL 3, and I had it search the repositories. Okay, that's extremely interesting. So obviously that is hallucinating real bad, even though I gave it the web search, despite using DeepSeek. But that's basically how you do the prompt engineering with an AI LLM using uh, really any 
LLM out there. Just have to tweak it a bit just to ensure you can do this properly. But that being said, I am out of time for today's video. Thank you and good night.